a true artist will be able to make a good painting out of anywhere, anytime. But to really make the special paintings, it, you know, it's always neat to have that just that one that light coming right right to the clouds right before it goes down. You cast a, casting these really interesting shadows on these perfect cliffs with an interesting foreground meandering into the scene. It's just uh, it's it's a very it's it's a tough it's a tough way to make a living. Yeah, we're with Ray Roberts. Ray, what do you think, baby? <laughs> World's ending. Oh, it's COVID nineteen, but we're oh still doing gosh. art, right? Yeah, might as well record this while I'm still here, huh? Yeah, while we're both still here, right? <laughs> we're in our sixties. Yeah, no, we're in the uh, we're in the episode that counts. That's right. Yeah. So you know, it's an interesting time with this coronavirus. Being an artist, you know, I feel that they're on the front lines of economically mm. how it affects them. Yeah, uh, you know, what's your take on this stuff? Well, I did. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of hard for me to really get my, get my hands, get my mind wrapped around it. It's, it's, um, I think you have to be very versatile and creative to, to get by these days. There's so many, so much art out there. And, and I think that, um, without, with, with less art in the schools, there are less people collecting it. And, mm. and with the boom of electronics and the media, it's just, it's, they're just, I don't think they're the collectors that they used to be. So there's probably. more people. Yeah, there's more people. So, yeah, you know. but I don't know. Do you have? You probably have a. Your you know, I have a, pulse. I don't know if I have a grip on it in the sense <clears throat> that it's a different kind of collecting. I think in some ways the younger people today are way more creative. Uh, I do. Maybe mm -hmm. they, I. I do think that there's not enough art in the schools. I agree with that. I think that's a big issue. Yeah. But I do believe that there is um, way more creativity out there. Mm -hmm. Kids are much more into that and and into art in a weird way because they really are, they know the Banskis and the other people of the world. May a different may be a different type of art form, but it's definitely a different. Uh, but they're there, and mm -hmm. I you know I have great hopes. It's just a matter of whether it will translate to what I'm doing as much as others. I don't know. I mean, yeah. all I know is that you're here with models today. Mm -hmm. and doing imagery of getting ready for painting, so you're full, you know, blasting ahead, uh, and I think that's what you have to do, right? Well, I, I'm actually living my dream. I've always enjoyed painting figures, and and um, not well. This this one gal, she, she's she's beautiful. You saw her today, Shandine. Yeah. Um, she's uh, the granddaughter of one of my first students. Uh, when I first started teaching here in Scottsdale uh -huh. 27 years ago, she was, she, she was uh, one of my first students. And um, I, I went to high school up in northern Arizona. And, and so I, I've got some roots here. And she, she lives up there. And it's just it just really, we hit it off. And her husband's Navajo Joe Benali. a very wonderful family. I, I love them. And, and uh, I just have always enjoyed painting figures. And... She's she's a beautiful young gal. Yeah, she oh yeah, she's amazing. In fact, for those people who are watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see these great paintings in the background. Those are Ray Roberts' brand new paintings that he brought into oh, us, which thanks. are you know beautiful. They're Navajo inspired, and they all have great blankets on them. They're fantastic. And now you said you grew up in Arizona. So wh where did you grow up? Let's hear uh, the well, backstory. Ray. <laughs> Let's get to the backstory. <laughs> uh, I spent my childhood in Orange County. So, uh, Southern California. That's right. I knew that. Yeah, and then I went to school up near Prescott, uh, called Orm School. It's a it's on forty thousand acres. It was a ranch setting. But you were in Orange County your entire. You went high school there too, right? No, I. Where did you go to? I went. Um, I went to high school in Arizona. Oh, you did. Yeah. Um, what did your dad do? My dad was uh, director of scientific research and development at McDonnell Douglas. Oh wow! And he died prematurely in since 1968. And so that's when uh, my family. So you were fourteen. Yeah. When he died. Wow. Mm -hmm. so that must have been incredibly difficult for your family. Yeah, it was. It was really traumatic. And uh, so it was a sudden death, kind of a thing. Yeah. He cancer came on. I just. Wow. And um, so then I got sent to Arizona for high school. So your family was in Orange County. Yes. And how many kids are in your family? Well, I had two brothers. Two brothers. Uh -huh. Okay. 
And so your dad is an engineer, an engineer, a yes, scientist, uh-huh. engineer, and he unfortunately passes away and you're 14 years old. Mm-hmm. And then your mom sends you to high school. Yeah. You mm-hmm. and your brothers or no, my you? brothers are older. So right. they were, they were able to cope with it a little better. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and had you started art at that point? Yeah, yeah. And I always enjoyed to uh, always enjoyed drawing. Um, I used to joke that Crayola was my babysitter. <laughs> was it? <laughs> it's just about yeah. That's how they they kept me busy when I was a kid. You know, just throw a bunch of crayons on, or pastels on the floor, and I loved to draw. Uh-huh. I always loved to draw and paint people and anything that, that struck me. And did you win any prizes early on or recognition from the school system? Uh... Well, art was art. No, no, I don't think so. Not really. No, I just, um, I just really enjoyed doing it, and and um, yeah, I, I between that and sports, I think those were the two biggest interests early on. And you did, you were, did you take art classes all through? Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and was there an art teacher that stuck out to you that encouraged you? Do you know? There was a couple of them, um, particularly at Orm. Um, Dot Lewis was my first year, first uh, art teacher there. She let me do art on independent study. And then a gal named Luann Knotts, uh, she was a teacher there. I, I wish I could get in touch with her. She was, she wasn't that much older than me. She, she was really encouraging. Yeah. So she really encouraged your skill set. Mm-hmm. And so those were high school art yes, teachers. Yes. I find it always amazing, you know, that I couldn't tell you who my high school art teacher is. I don't even know if we had one. That's oh. how poor art was received in my little town, oh. unfortunately. Oh boy. You know, um, which, you know, probably affected where the way I went too. Yeah. But um, I find it interesting that those people were so inflective that you can remember their names and still want to reach out to them. So they clearly had some impact. Yes. Yeah. 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 They were, uh, very supportive and very encouraging. The classes at Orm were very small. So, you know, when you have eight students in a class, oh, that's wonderful. you don't get lost. And that was located in Arizona? Where? Yeah, Prescott, near Prescott. Uh-huh. Just 30 miles east of Prescott. Now, I understand you are quite a uh, baseball uh you were a star, right? You were, you were pretty well known, right? <laughs> yeah, in <laughs> yeah, a school of 200 students. Yeah, there you I, go. But you, did, you guys, didn't you win state championships or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were undefeated. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. And did you ever consider going to uh, nope. into sports? Did nope. you know you were, when you graduated high school that you were going to go into? It was a small school. It's easy to look like a you know a big fish in a small pond. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, I... Um, Baseball is a, it's got a completely different mentality than, than what I was interested in. So you were going to do, and you went into, you said, I'm going to go into art right away. I thought I was going to be an engineer or an architect. Had my dad lived, uh-huh. who knows how he would have influenced me. I think he, I think he was trying to get me into electronics, probably maybe get me into electronic engineering. Yeah. Were you good at this stuff? Uh, Math and physics? And yeah. Like yeah. I got a bent for that. My I can dad see was, that. My dad was was bright i mean well, you know clearly was, yeah he was the director of it <laughs> wow he was the director of mcdonald douglas he was director of r&d wow what were they developing do he you know could share that he never you know he's not he probably share. couldn't anyway there may have been things they couldn't even talk about it oh time. yeah yeah he had a secret clearance he had a top level yeah clearance. yeah because yeah, when you graduate you graduate in 68 or so 72 72 okay mm-hmm. so you just kind of were missing it vietnam was yes was kind of cranking down so mm-hmm. you you probably may have had to do the draft number but really wasn't an issue for you right right yeah so you yeah, were, thank god yeah you were lucky so you mm-hmm. ended up uh going to la right yes <clears throat> tell me about I that did, i did a couple of years junior college and um from there i decided that that commercial art was I visited the school, Art Center, College of Design. They were still in Los Angeles before they moved to Pasadena. Then, and um, when I when I uh, toured the school, I, I, they had just incredible artwork on the walls. Mm. And it was really inspiring, and it was it was illustration is what I was looking at, and as opposed to fine arts programs in most of the colleges at the time. And it was representational, which is what I like to do. And I I thought that well, you know, I could make a career. I did my research and found out that the uh, that the income was there for to support uh, 
commercial artist in in advertising advertising art so that's when i figured that you know that's what i wanted to do yeah there's some great artists that went to art center right yeah yeah, yeah. who else was in your class or classes around you there's some good artists that went through that um, program yeah they're they're in different fields a lot of them are still in illustration a lot of them are different kinds of artists different types of artists uh, there aren't a lot of people that uh that are that i know directly in my class from from then that are in in my field right they're now. making there, there but there's some still making a living as an artist oh yeah there's there's right? quite a few of them but uh, most of some of them are, are very reclusive some of them um <laughs> they just do their own thing um not not so many not so much southwest art yeah but the artists yeah making mm -hmm. it so yeah. you do that for four years and or two you guess you do that too two years of junior college and then two years of art school four years of art school four years total. yeah but yeah. I, I crammed through so i i managed to get through it in two and a half years and did you meet your wife there <laughs> I, I did yeah. i did we didn't uh we lost touch she uh she left early to pursue a career in fashion illustration hmm. and it was uh seven years later that we ran into each other again oh wow were you in the same class Yes, we had a few classes that were oh. together, but um, no. you guys date then? Nope. No, no. <laughs> I got to get the lay low down. Peggy <laughs> Crow Roberts, who's a very uh, wonderful artist, uh, and uh, occasionally she gives me stuff, huh, Peggy? Not often, though. <laughs> but she's really amazing. So she did fashion. I didn't know that. How yeah. long did she do that? Oh my gosh, I think she did that for about five years, maybe even a little longer. And then uh, from there, she she got a job working uh, at an ad agency doing um, comprehensive sketches. Hmm. And was this um, in New York or where? This was in L.A. Oh, in L.A. Oh. Uh huh. And before that, she'd been back in Milwaukee working there. And I imagine I think she did some she got some uh, commissions out of uh, Chicago. But. Um, yeah, and it was 84 is when we met again. When uh -huh. we, when we ran into and when did you graduate? 78. So you graduate. And so what do you do between 78 and 84? What are you doing art-wise? I was starting my career. Uh, <clears throat> I had a mixed, I had a blended uh, major at Art Center. I was advertising illustration. So I got lettering, I got advertising, I got film, photography, package design, uh, as well as the art classes too. So I didn't. I didn't graduate with as strong as portfolio, strong uh, portfolio as my peers did. They were able to get right in and do the, you know, the book jackets, the movie posters, and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I kind of had to start a little bit lower, but uh, I, I always look back on that with um, as, as kind of like blind luck. I it, I had to focus in on my black and white illustration. I did a lot of black and white mm. illustration, which, which. Um, when you when you're working in black and white, you really have to make things clear because it's being oftentimes reproduced in newspaper, newsprint, mm -hmm. which is a very uh, absorbent paper, and um, so you want your you want your your illustrations to look clear, and, and they, you want them to be you want them to pop. So um, starting off doing that at the beginning kind of helped me build my foundation for for art. And were you just kind of freelancing? Is that how yeah. you did? Mm -hmm. yeah. You did you have an agent? That yeah, yeah, I went to some some agents. Uh huh. And then they would go, "Oh, we've got a gig for you. This is what we want." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, do you present it, and then they say yes, or you get the job right off the bat, or a little of both? Uh, not too much spec top, spec jobs. A lot of it was quick turnaround. So they call you up. We have a job, and then you do it and turn turn it in. Mm hmm. And so you're doing that for how many years? Six years? Um, I started getting color work about a year or two later. A year or two, three, three years later. And you call it color work? Oh, color illustration. Yeah, okay. Because that's a lot more expensive, high, big budgets. Um, and what kind of ads have you done? Do you remember? It's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did a lot of... Um, ads that in, involved water because I, I always imp enjoyed painting water um so you know i did some stuff budweiser uh, i think miller miller beer um a lot of cruise ships uh -huh. princess cruises chantress cruises um 
Did some shoes, did a lot of shoes. <laughs> and I did some stuff for Motorola. All kinds of companies. The, the Arizona Department of Tourism, I did a whole uh, billboard thing for them. What was that? Do you remember? That was just a bunch of people, uh, kids doing stuff, people doing things and in, in activities that you can do in, in Arizona. Yeah. That was probably uh, 90, 1990 maybe. Did you know about Dixon at that time? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You'd learned a little in art college maybe or not. Um, I don't know. I can't remember when I I learned learned about him. I mean, he was such an important illustrator too. Yes. Yes. I figured at some point you probably would have come up with recognizing who he Mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I don't think he was anywhere near as collectible back then. No, no. (laughs) Well, I just don't think he, Western art was really kind of having its second wind, I think. Yeah, you know, with the cowboy artists of America and that kind of thing taking right. off. Yes, so I, those guys were illustrators, and they, I think they they kind of paved the way for a lot of landscape painters who are making a living today. Yeah, kind of popularized popularized the um, realistic painting. Yeah. Now, so how long did you um, do the illustrations for? Uh, seventy eight to uh, about twelve years. Starting in seventy eight, is so you got out of art school at yeah. that time. Mm-hmm. So 90, years. basically. Yeah, yeah. And then it was it was gradual. Uh, Peggy and I were taking, we, we took a couple of oil painting classes. And Who'd you use? Who was the artist? That, did you? Oh, we took Damakos class uh-huh. in, in, when we were still living in L.A. in 84. And um, <clears throat> I studied with John Osara at Art Center, and Peggy also studied with him later mm-hmm. on here at Scottsdale. And... Uh, you know, I ask this question because every, you know, you teach a lot, you know. Not as much as I used to. But but you do teach. And mm-hmm. yeah, and I've had so many artists who just love your classes. Oh. And, and, you know, from very, very good artists to people who are just trying to learn to paint. And they always find your classes to be really interesting. So what did you learn from teaching with those other artists that you translated into your own classes? Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Um uh, my, my classes are, uh, I, I, I kind of refer to them as, as taking the, the studio class, the studio approach where, where you paint from the, the, um, the plaster statues and, and you take that outdoors. I, I try to teach, um, light and shadow. It's a very academic approach where you learn about, um, how, how, um, light creates form in an object. And I try to um, approach it like the landscape, as if the landscape was a plaster cast, and you did not worry about color or anything else. You just captured the light on objects, light on and shadow mm. in objects, which creates form, which in turn creates the illusion of light in a painting. So it's a very academic approach. Mm. It's a very studio approach. Uh, that's, I you know, I, I like to think it's from the you know the Renaissance era era when they were concentrating on on uh, you know those those big dark figure paintings of the uh, 1700s 1800s mm-hmm. um, where it's black and they they have the very rich colors and stuff like that it's just a very um, like for lack of better words academic approach to to paint and do you do that outside or is yeah. this yeah because I mean I've watched you paint and I've watched your classes actually in fact I have a painting of one of those that uh, you gave me in fact you don't even know you probably don't even remember but it was in Laguna you're painting out at Laguna uh, uh-huh. and, oh that's right yeah yeah I, was hang, I still had it hangs in my house and that um, so when you have your classes a lot of that is just what you're doing outside this light talking about how to capture the light of an object not worry about the colors so much but the light yes yeah that's yeah. interesting uh huh yeah, well, you're, you know, you have such a natural sense, I think, of light and color mm, anyway. Thank you. I always call you my artist artist. I don't know if you know that. Oh. But you're my artist artist because when people come in, artists come into my gallery, they always gravitate to your paintings, always, hmm. first. Wow. And they look at them from the side, from every angle, because they're trying to figure out how you do it. Because hmm. you have, your brush strokes are so... Uh, 
you know exactly where you're going to put that hmm. that brush stroke. Oh, thank you. They're very strong. They're very uh, secure in the way they do it. And I <laughs> I can always tell when an artist comes in because they go to your your painting and they're not looking at it front. They're looking at it from the side because hmm. they're trying to see how you did the color, how you laid things down. But hmm. um, more than any of the artists that I have, is that right? Wow. Yeah, that's really interesting. Wow. Most hmm. uh, and so you you start painting in earnest as an artist around 1990. Is that about right? I started taking classes at the Scottsdale Art School. Mm -hmm. um, Bob Lemler, Robert Lemler, is a tremendous artist. He lives up there. He he, uh, he, he arranged for me to uh, trade for some illustration early on for classes. And, uh, boy, I, I'm eternally grateful to him for that because it... It was really a great experience to paint with a lot of the leading um, artists at that time. That was close to 30 years ago. Um, just just painting with them and and uh, gleaning from them what I building on from what I'd learned at the art center and and my formative years in black and white. It was a really a great opportunity. Did you know about? That time you go, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to. I'm, uh, I always thought I'd be an artist, yeah. but I think I was like an artist in denial. Yeah, <laughs> it just. Well, it's scary know. too, right? I mean, you got to make a living. Yeah, yes, and we had three in diapers. <laughs> so when you went to that, when you decided to become an artist and start taking these classes at art school, you were married and had three kids at that point. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When Peggy was she painting as well? She was. She was. Yeah. As an artist. Yeah. Not as an illustrator. Right. Yeah. Well, we there was a little, there was a couple of years there where we had a crossover. And we were still doing a little bit of illustration and trying to make it in, as oil painters. Is and it, when, when was your first, uh, what was your first gallery that you got gallery representation? Do you remember? I don't. It might have been a small gallery in Vail. I think it was a small Leaping Otis is what it was called mm. in Vail. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's fun. We we uh we were doing outdoor shows here in the winter, mm -hmm. and then uh, my aunt and uncle had a place in, in Colorado and and in Vail. They offered uh, us to use it there if we wanted to do art shows up there. So we did did the Vail art shows up there. Yeah, but you were living in Arizona at this time, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, where were you living? Scottsdale. Yeah, mm -hmm. and was that just because of the access to artists and art school? Is that why we were living in Scottsdale? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, it was, it was a, it was called North Scottsdale when we moved there, but it's actually just right at the airport, which is right in the middle now, you know, cause mm -hmm. Scottsdale, Scottsdale goes all the way up to uh, Carefree. But, um, uh, we just, we love the, the wonderful new houses that they were building there and nice big lots and they had good schools. So mm -hmm. that's why we moved there. We were still about, there. You always painted the desert. It seems like you love the desert. I assume mm -hmm. that might be part of the reason too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we came out here uh, to do illustration and because of the uh, active galleries of representational art mm -hmm. at, at the time. And were you just doing landscapes at this point when mm -hmm. you first started? Yeah, yeah, mostly landscapes. Uh -huh. And plain okay. air was starting to take in to kick in too, right? About the same time that you were really getting into being becoming an artist. Is, well, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's it's our our background is so funny because there's so many ways that things kind of weave in and out. Um, it was before Bob Limler. We we had uh, friends who were illustrators out here because Peggy and I were both doing illustration out here. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my illustration buddies had been taking these classes at Scottsdale Art, Art School, and he really enjoyed it. In fact, he enjoyed it so much he decided that he was going to have a show of six by eight inch paintings. Hmm. And he's charged, you know, 500 bucks for them. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you're out of your mind. You're never gonna sell these for this. And and he was encouraging Peggy and, and me to go to the Scottsdale Art of School where we would go to open sessions and paint and draw and stuff. And it was hard for us because we, you know, we had to get a babysitter and do all that. But we started doing that. And, and then he had his show. And, you know, he really was the one that encouraged this. Well, after his show, 
Kevin McPherson ended up doing pretty good for himself. That was Kevin that had it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah he sold a lot of those little six yeah, by Yeah, he did. He did. Shout and, out to Kevin. Yeah. So we're, we're actually very grateful to him for his encouragement for us to do that. Too. Yeah. So he was doing all these little plain air studies. Yes. And doing well. And he was just kind of, he was kind of getting going on his own, uh, career at that point too he's still a pretty young artist at that point right yeah yeah he, he became president of plenty of painters of america and they were having this show at catalina and that thing was always blockbusters they were they were they were just selling i mean the, the stories that you could hear the, the rumble of the of the collectors <laughs> running down the hall to, to get to the paintings first this was 90s right yes yes and even to the early 2000s probably right yeah mm-hmm and so you decide, okay, I'm going to be a plain air kind of guy. Is that I, right? Well, that's when you get your best color. You know, working from photographs, landscape photographs, is just you just don't get the same uh, same impression that you get from when you're painting from life. So mm-hmm. that was a that was a, and Clyde Aspavica, He was my first uh, workshop that I take first full workshop. I oh, took that good, one in New Mexico. One. <laughs> yeah, so I I. You know, I loved the light that he was getting in his work, and that was his method, and that was that was a traditional method that he's that the guys, hundred years before, were doing Edgar Payne. He'd go out and do the field sketches, and then work them up in the studio. Mm-hmm. Dixon too. Yeah, Maynard Dixon. Yep, a lot of them did actually. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because that's kind of what I think of you as, really. You know, originally uh-huh. I was a plain air painter when I first met you. Uh-huh. You remember when we first met? Yes, Bonita? yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell your end of the story, and then I'll tell mine. Well, I. I just, I remember you, you walking by the window. I was, I was having a, I think my first gallery show there in Scottsdale and, and I saw you walking by and then you kind of stopped and looked at one of my paintings and you came in and I hadn't known who you were. I, I, I yeah, I think I, I'd been down to your gallery once. Yeah. yeah. And you had some Maynard Dixons then and mm-hmm. yeah, and I was really impressed with your gallery then. Yeah. That was early on too. I don't even remember when that was, maybe 90. Four or six or was it? Yeah. yeah, it was early. I know mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it was Taos Gallery. I oh yes, Taos Gallery. Yeah, Taos uh-huh. Gallery. I was uh-huh. walking uh, with a buddy of mine. It happened to be Thursday night. Right, right. Art, Art walk. walk. Yes. And I remember going by, literally talking to him, and going by the window, and your paintings were in the window, and I stopped. It took me a second to to comprehend what I had just seen. I stopped and I went back and I said, oh my God, I said, this guy's fantastic. Mm, he reminds me of Maynard Dixon. <laughs> He's just real, this can really paint. And I said, I, I've got to go in and look at this guy's artwork. And then it just so happened that you were having a show that night uh, or that day, whatever right. that night. And you had said to me, oh yeah, I know who you are. And yeah, I've kind of interested you in your gallery. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do anything in front of the gallery here, but give oh. me a call because <laughs> uh-huh. I think you're great. And then uh-huh. you came aboard and, that's been, you know, whatever, 25 years ago or so. Yeah. Or longer. Yeah. yeah. So they well, do. thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank they you. jive. Those stories do jive. <laughs> I remember it vividly. I can still yeah. remember walking with Steve and going by that and seeing that painting and stopping mm. and going. And I think that's how art's supposed to be, right? That mm. is what, you know, what I look for in an artist is I stop. It causes me to feel some kind of emotion mm-hmm. and go, oh, my gosh, what is, who is this? person and how do i not know about them and i think as collectors and as dealers that should be the way you you know look for artists is they have to you have to have some kind of guttural reaction to their work and i definitely Mm -hmm. had it with yours i still have it Mm. with yours that painting that you just brought in navajo one with the kind of the uh, bluish sky and the petroglyphs and the Mm. in the box um textile which i'll put on the cover actually of your podcast so people can see what i'm talking about but that thing just blows me away and that's at a different level of something you were doing that you haven't been doing before right i mean it, it's a little more evocative it's uh, i had a lot of fun painting that that uh that painting yeah it's i'm trying to put more thought into into uh, working these paintings up and and just spending more time in the planning stage than than rather than just make a painting mm-hmm. um yeah, it's, uh, I, I I really had a lot of fun with that one. So let's talk about. So you do plain air painting. You're very painting. successful. They, uh, they, you know, you do very well. You win the Maynard Dixon Award here in 
Tucson, right, for one of your plein air paintings at the mm-hmm. Sonoran Desert Museum. Mm-hmm. I know that. And then you, at some point, not long after that, you decided to start doing some figurative work. Yeah, I've always done figurative yeah. work. I just haven't put it out. Yeah, and that's what you told me. I remember that. Yeah. I remember you saying yeah. that. You know, when you're in the studio, it's hard to make a, a finished painting. You just, you just it, it uh, a lot of the times it's just practicing and, and getting your getting your skills up to up to where you're comfortable. But to really put together a figure painting, it's it, it has to be a studio painting as opposed to a study. And so, just recently, I've, I've in the last ten years, I've I've been focusing more on that. Yeah, but even before that, you for your one of your first figurative paintings, you entered in the Laguna Art Museum, right, in that show, and won it, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I won a few awards. Uh, yeah, but that was yeah. for a figurative painting that you won that. Yeah, the California Art Club, maybe yeah. the best one you yeah. think of. Yeah, that was one of my first. Again, that was a studio piece, but it was done from a, a sketch that I did on from life. Mm-hmm. And so, when when you do these paintings, because you know these. Your paintings have are incredibly beautiful landscapes, mm. and um, but you've somehow managed to take the figure and incorporate it. What's the what's what is that? How do you go about thinking about what you're going to do on that? There's there's a uh, figure work has really come into vogue in the last few years, mm-hmm. and a lot of it is is so fine. It's such great artwork, but so much of it is done inside the studio that that there are very few artists who are taking their figure painting outdoors. That's what I'm trying to do. Is I'm trying to take my figure painting outdoors. So when I when I do a um, when I do paint figures, I prefer to have them in an outdoor setting mm. as opposed to um, a limited palette about uh, not not bright colors but more sunlight stuff that's what peggy does that's what's just so wonderful about her work is is Mm. the light she gets and she paints them outdoors Mm. her figurative work Mm -hmm. but like today we had two young navajo or one young navajo girl in here for the model and Mm -hmm. you set it up and you're i mean you're doing some amazing stuff tech wise What, what, what was all that how you set that up so you get the right imagery oh well you can share what you want. <laughs> I can hear it. In the, in the <laughs> it's you know I I don't have a lot of confidence in my f- photography skills, and so I prefer to use video. Mm. Um, I'm not. I don't feel really comfortable about posing the model, so I prefer to catch catch the model when they're a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more comfortable. And so if I just have the camera going the whole time, hopefully I'll be able to find a find a frame there that I can. I can work from. Mm-hmm. And you're looking for some, the way that they look at you or the way that the blank, because all these pretty much had blankets involved, the way the blanket mm-hmm. is folded and that kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. I look for the, the whole thing, and sometimes I might might borrow some from one photograph and put it in another, you know, c- compose a painting as opposed to just painting literally from a single frame. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just a, seems to be a better way to work, and I don't need the the uh, fine quality photographer that a lot of people get. I just need just a little germ of a of, a, of an image to to. Uh, and then you use that as a reference. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you set it next to the easel kind of thing as mm-hmm. you're painting. Yes. And and that way you can refer to it back as a reference. Right. And plus, I've got. Uh, I've got literally thousands of, of studies and sketches that I can look at too for color. Mm-hmm. Ones that you did out, outdoors. Some are outdoors. Some, most of them are in the studio. But then I've got my planner sketches for my landscape portion of the paintings. Mm-hmm. And do you still do some plein air? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I get them. I assume yeah. that, that you're still out there doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, most of the time, it seems like when I'm teaching these landscape classes, when I'm able to get some some field studies done. Mm-hmm. And what do you think that, how do you see that area of, of the art world, plain air, going? Um, it seems there's somewhat of a retraction from it, as far as the number of artists that are doing it, at least. Maybe. Well, I'm on the studio side of this. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't know. You probably, I think you probably have a better feel for it than I do. Seems like it. It's not that there's less interest. I still have people who are very interested, in it, including myself. Uh-huh. But it seems like there's I see less artists that are producing plain air now. I don't right. know if that's true or not. Yeah. You know, it's it's really 
difficult and time consuming to find the perfect spot at, uh, where, it, where it's all painted for you and the, the, it's not, the weather's just right or the weather's just wrong or it's not windy or the bugs, you know, as if it's June, you got bugs and, <laughs> you know, if it's warm enough, too warm or too cold, it's really hard to, it's a lot of work. And I, it, I've got so, so much admiration for the guys that, that go yeah. out there and the Matt Smiths of the world. Yeah. That, that go out there and do that. And, yeah. And, um, I think my skin doctor would prefer that I don't go out and do that as much too. <laughs> well, that is, I mean, there are hazards of painting. There's, I mean, people laugh about it, but you're right. You know, that's one of them. Sun exposure is a big mm -hmm. deal because you got to be out there for hours at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, really the best, uh, a true artist will be able to make a good painting out of anywhere, anytime, but, to really make the, the special paintings, it, you know, it's always neat to have that just that one that light coming right right to the clouds right before it goes down. Mm -hmm. Cast a, casting these really interesting shadows on these perfect cliffs with an interesting foreground meandering into the scene. It's just uh, it's it's a very it's it's a tough it's a tough way to make a living. <laughs> and 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 having said that. What would your recommendation be to artists that are thinking, okay, I want to be, I want to do this for a living? Well, it was funny. A lot of, you know, you never heard people say, well, I want to be an artist when I grow up. Well, at least I didn't ever hear that until like maybe 10 years ago. So 10 years ago, I started hearing that. My, my advice for, oh boy, <laughs> um, just work hard at making sure that you get your values right. Do lots of black and white paintings. Mm-hmm. And drawing? What about that? Drawing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. A commitment. Commitment. Complete commitment. <laughs> Designing, yeah. Learn, learn to be a designer. Yeah. What about yeah. the business aspect? Because you've had to navigate that in a couple of different ways. I mean, once you, you did have a gallery for a short period of time in Laguna. Yeah, that's, um, you know, if, if you don't have any other things uh, like family responsibilities, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, to be an artist artist gallery owner um we had our challenges at the time so you know we i think we we did a did make a good go of it but unfortunately our house was up north and there was just too many miles for us to, mm -hmm. to do that yeah but your de peggy especially has been extremely successful with through the internet and doing yeah. podcasts and stuff or uh, doing uh webinars right yeah mm -hmm. now what does she do exactly we'll give a shout out to peggy oh thanks yeah she she uh does offers online lessons and we've been uh, doing uh, offering videos through streaming. Um, it's a great way to learn. It, uh, there's it's a lot less expensive than than uh, realistic. I mean than than uh, go to workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to. You don't have the hotel and and uh, traveling expenses that are involved. Um, it's remote remote learning, right? Isn't that what it's called? Mm -hmm. And she teaches. Yeah, she teaches. And, and how do people find her to, if they want to take this? They go to our website, crawlroberts.com. Uh -huh. And do you do it as well, or is it just? I like have, a... I have. I'm thinking about starting it up again um, to teach. It's, it's a little more difficult for me because um, I feel more comfortable behind a camera instead of in front of it. Mm -hmm. And I can Peggy can be in front of a camera while I'm behind it, and I do all the editing and the tech stuff. We have some other friends that help us with it, but. Um, to do it all is that's that's again it's pretty demanding to be the tech person the camera guy mm -hmm. and the and, and the art person the talent yes yeah, the talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i understand that mm -hmm. all too well um yeah she seems like she would be a natural as a teacher oh she is yeah, yeah she's so vibrant and just uh the way she paints i've watched her paint yeah she's really she would be great i haven't mm -hmm. so do they pay to get to the webinar is that how they do it yeah, yeah, you, you can uh, either stream videos if you like mm -hmm. per, per view or you can uh, sign up for classes too that she does live. Yeah. It's live online. Yeah. Is another... I would highly recommend people to do that if they're interested in, in uh, learning how to paint because she's very good at that. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, no, that's true. Now, Peggy, give me some paintings, would you? Send me a <laughs> couple of your beach scenes here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> she's so busy teaching, I don't think she gets to paint as much as she used to. So how do you see this world changing from as an artist in Western art? That's what you focus on. 
Oh my gosh, how do I see this? You know, I, I don't like to, I'm not very good at thinking quickly on my feet. I, I, I never know where it's going to go. Um, I like to take a little bit of time and, and thought before I answer questions like that. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's the right answer then. Actually. That's the right answer. Well, in some ways, yeah. yeah. I don't think any of us really know. I mean, yeah. we have a sense. Um, you know, you're not changing the what you're doing, right? No. Well, I, I feel like I'm evolving. You know, I'm. I'm but evolving in the same sense, you're still doing Western art. Yeah. You haven't moved to abstraction or something. Right. Right. No, I, I enjoy I enjoy doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to get the total answer out of that. Well, <laughs> so, um, a, a friend of ours take, to, uh, takes a lot of, took a lot of watercolor classes from, from this artist, and they asked him, he recently died, I, his name will come to me. They asked him, oh, what do you look for when you paint? What do you, where is your going? And he said, to entertain myself. Mm. And... You know, at first, at first glance, that sounds pretty glib. But really, when you think about it, that's there's there's so much depth in that. You know, that's that's what we do. That's what painters do. You know, we're we're entertaining ourselves when we do this, and uh, that's what I that's what keeps me going back to the easel. Yeah, because you entertain yourself. Mm -hmm. I get that. I totally yeah. get that. You have to. If it's not entertaining, if it becomes grudge work or a, just a job, then I think there's lots of other things we can do in life. Mm -hmm. You know, if it motivates you every time you're in the easel to go, oh, this is fun or interesting. It's all hard work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have to tell you that. You've been you've been doing this as a professional for almost 50 years, really. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's that's right. I mm -hmm. think that's exactly right. Same as a dealer, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Hmm. You know, if you lose the sense of enjoyment and childlike, you know, joy um, from seeing art, then maybe you should go sell something else, <laughs> you know, because you're not doing your artists any favors. Uh -huh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I think you could almost use it as a barometer when so bring your art in, mm -hmm. have your lay it out on the ground and watch how your gallerists respond. Mm -hmm. And their response should be one of enjoyment and amazement. Mm -hmm. I know mine is every time. It just comes mm -hmm. from the gut. I can't stop it. I don't, you know, it's just like, mm -hmm. oh my, well, that's amazing. And that should be it. Mm -hmm. uh, if they lose that, I'm not sure they have what, it, I, don't, I, I think it's become a more of a selling product instead of selling emotional connection to the art and the person. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty philosophy, huh? Mm -hmm. little, mm -hmm. uh, no, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's very profound. I don't know, there, very right? profound, but that's how I see it, at least. Yeah. For, oh. you know, how I look at art. Right. For sure. Right. Uh, but I think I'm supposed to interview you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to kind of talk about from your life or what's going on? Oh, I, uh, for my life, yeah. No, um, we have five grandsons now, and watching those, those our our children's families grow is has been a very it's it's um quite quite an interesting life it's been a full life and and um we're enjoying it Are you giving them crayons <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> any of them have can you see any of that uh, creativity uh, the, uh, beat in uh, any uh, of those yeah, yeah they just they draw on everything it's yeah <laughs> I, would, I would think i mean they've got two artists as a uh, as their basis and are your kids any of your kids in art um yeah our, our middle one is very artistic in, the, in her own way our youngest is very she, she's the one that likes to paint the most she's she's very gifted but she's uh she just had a baby and and she's more interested in doing that yeah and um yeah she's she's into her family and and um uh, my son, he's he's funny. I I saw him do a drawing once when he was early teens, and I said, "Boy, I, you know, you've got it. You could do this." And he goes, "Dad, I want to make money." <laughs> so, and has he made money? Oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's done. Do, he's doing great. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. I mean, people who think they're going to go into art because they want to be famous or rich 
they better go find another profession. Yeah. Because <laughs> chances are you're not going to be either. Right. But you may be very fulfilled. Yeah, there you go. You know, and mm -hmm. you know, if you have that calling that that's all you can think about, dream about, want to do day and night, then you definitely have to go into art and you should. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of it starts as we started this podcast was into schools. Mm. That yes. we need to give money to especially the primary schools. Right. You know, and get them interested in art mm -hmm. uh, and work that part of the brain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because even if you don't become an artist, so to speak, where you, you know, make things to sell, you may make things that'll change your life. Or and other people's lives too. I and mean, other people's yeah, lives. Yeah, designing there's there's all kinds of there's art yeah. in every aspect of our life. Yes. And there's fulfillment in every aspect of our life. How many people I I, I don't necessarily want to take it this direction but how many people how many fewer people would, would be in prison if if there had been more art in schools yeah or if they had a, more art in prison to help them oh, yeah. cope with uh isolationism and all the things that they have to deal with you know i, I don't even know that aspect of, you know right. that's how ignorant i am on well, that it's, subject people haven't studied it you know like yeah. in, in the craftsmanship and in, in all aspects of life too yeah making things yeah it's just, um, it's tunnel vision. It's just geared towards, uh, you know, math and science. And we're not all math and scientists, mathematicians and scientists. Right. Well, and I think we forget about kids that are creative types, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of times they don't do well in math and science or even reading and writing. Mm -hmm. Their focus, their brain works differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, most of our society doesn't... Um, give crude credence to these kind of individuals we kind of marginalize them versus going these are some of our greatest gifts mm -hmm. <laughs> you know these people should be recognized and be allowed to follow in their own track it sounds like you got lucky and by going to the small school very and, lucky yes. yeah that allowed you to really focus on that extremely lucky yes yeah so all those people out there listening Give to art schools. Give to the <laughs> primary art schools. Those are the kind of things I think do make a difference. Mm -hmm. All right, Ray. I'm glad you finally came to do my podcast. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. You've Thanks. been putting it off, and now you're going to be on the annals with all the other artists. You're a fantastic artist. Mm, you're, you're a fantastic dealer. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I think the best thing about having a dealer-artist relationship is it, it's a friendship. I mean, we've done a lot of different things in a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. It's not just buying and selling art mm -hmm. or making art. It's really more than that. It's mm -hmm. about um, it's about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yes. Even though Peggy doesn't give me any art. <laughs> we'll leave it on that one, Peggy. Sorry. I, I, I know you'll give me some now. <laughs> Ray Roberts, one of my very favorite artists. Mm. And probably you've been with my gallery as long as anyone. Um, Longer. Yeah. I think you are, actually. I think you're the longest uh, gallery uh, artist, that, living artist that I've had. And, mm. uh, that, and that says something that we've managed to continue to be able to do things over that period of time because it's not always easy we've gone through you know at least three recessions together mm, so that's wow <laughs> isn't that amazing yeah it is amazing yeah wow. <laughs> and hopefully there'll be another one way way in the future that we'll have to go through as well but uh, uh, no, no yeah i don't, I don't you don't want any more uh, you got well they you know they come with time you can't you know recessions are you know like the seasons they are going to come uh <laughs> and i think the real artists, you know, they know this and they hunker down and they do their job and they work at stuff and they just keep doing what they do. Mm. And so do the real galleries. So yeah. I'm excited. I'm thrilled to see this artwork behind me. Oh, super. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and just this one, particularly this little small one with all the figures. Mm. Dixon did something kind of like that as he well. He did. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it really has that sense. He did that in 1923. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, migration. He did two of them, right. actually. He did one and two. He mm -hmm. did a little watercolor with it, and he actually did two oils. So it has that same sensibility, but definitely in a Ray Roberts fashion. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to force everybody to go to YouTube so they can get to see this. <laughs> or just go and you can see it online, all his new work. So thanks, Ray. I'd shake your hand, but we're not doing that anymore. Oh, yeah. Fist bump, So right? we'll fist bump it. Wow. Yes. yes. And uh, we'll let you go. Thanks, thanks for me. taking the time. Ray hey. Roberts. Thanks so much, Mark. Uh -huh. All right. See you.
All right, that was fantastic. Thank you. A little painless. We tried to make it as painless as possible. We need your support for the Medicine Man Gallery channel, so make sure to click the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video, which we do every morning on Wednesday and Friday. See you soon.